Hola, bienvenidos a mi canal. Welcome back to my channel, guys. If you are new, my name is Mosa La Torre. I started saying my intros in Spanish because I think it's really fun. Um, hopefully, it doesn't trick you guys into thinking the entire video is going to be in Spanish. Um, but for now, I really like it. I enjoy it. So I might start doing that in all my intros or maybe just like the next couple, you know, few videos until I get out of my system. Uh, today's video is going to be a Q&A. And I go on live all the time on Insta Stories and um, I answer you guys' DMs, but so many questions go unanswered, especially during lives, because it's really hard for me to read questions and do makeup at the same time. So now that my makeup's already done, I can just sit and talk with all of you and just keep it really intimate. Um, I will let you guys know um, that when I ask you to submit questions on Insta Stories, I give a little disclaimer that I will not answer questions about engagement, marriage, pregnancy, things like that, because it's not that the questions are rude, and I know it's coming from a good place. I know you guys just genuinely um, are excited for me and want to know, but at the same time, those questions are so personal that I think if you give an answer to those questions, it sets these expectations for you that if they then don't come true in the time frame that you give your followers, then you have to deal with the stream of questions that come afterwards. I thought you were gonna get married now. I thought you were gonna have babies by this time. So it can just spiral out of control and you just never know what's going on in people's lives. I just think some questions should be kept to oneself or um, some answers should be kept to oneself because they are so personal. So I hope you guys can respect that. And um, I love you guys and I do love to share a majority of my life with you, um, especially if it's for the betterment of, or is that a word, betterment? Why do I always question my words in my videos? Especially if it helps you improve your own personal lives. But those questions I like to keep to myself and have it be a mystery and just let, let life unravel as it naturally would. So yeah, with that said, let's get into today's questions. What is your favorite athleisure brand? Currently Gymshark because everything just fits incredible it fits like a glove especially when i'm 5-0 it's really important that i find leggings that fit me really really well would you ever dye your hair lighter i'm curious to see you in light brown hair i actually had blonde hair in college i brought in a photo of carmen electra when she had that mustard blonde hair color i made the stylist do it in one session and <laughs> i loved it for the moment but the upkeep was insane and my hair is naturally really dry so it didn't take very well it didn't last me long at all i think it lasted one summer and i also had to dye my brows because if not the mustard hair color with black brows just didn't look right so i don't think i would ever dye my hair i would definitely get into wigs especially like platinum blonde and colorful like pink and blue colors um but dyeing my hair probably not aside from just deepening it here and there with a gloss which is what i do now are you going to get another dog? We definitely want to get Mikachu uh, a brother, uh, hopefully another husky because I love the breeds so much. They make me so happy. They're such a unique breed and I think it takes a special kind of person to care for a husky, which is why a lot of them end up in shelters. It's really sad. Um, people buy them for their beauty and then don't realize that they are a working breed, which means they are very, very highly active dogs. And I love that about them. I love how stubborn they are, how energetic they are. I love that they keep me on my toes. Um, so I definitely want to get another dog, hopefully soon, so that Mika can have a brother. Do you find the beauty industry shallow? And all I can think about when reading this question is the song from A Star Is Born. I would belt it out for you guys, but I'm not a great singer. And I think back in the day, yes, the beauty industry was very shallow. I think that there was this ideal beauty that everyone was striving for, um, particularly what you would see in magazines and TV. But nowadays, the beauty industry is so diverse, especially with all of us on YouTube and Instagram um, and with brands using us for their campaigns. I feel like it's created such diversity in this industry that there isn't one particular definition of what is beautiful. I think there are many uh, many things that go into making something beautiful or making a person beautiful. So I don't think it is shallow. I think or it could really depend on how you look at the industry. So some people might think it's shallow. I personally being in it firsthand, I, I don't think it is, especially nowadays. But back in the day, yes, it was probably very, very shallow. <laughs> do you speak fluent Spanish? If not, does it make you feel less of a Latina? I do sometimes. Sad face. I speak fluent Spanish. I used to say, no, I'm not that fluent. Pero si hablo español, es que tengo un acento cuando hablo español y me hace muy nerviosa cuando estoy hablando con otros que 
hablan español muy bien porque they can pick up on the accent and I really, really dislike when people knock me for it or make fun of it when I'm trying to improve my Spanish because it was my first language. So I would say um, I am still pretty fluent, especially because I can um, completely understand it, read it. Um, it's just speaking it. I stumble on my words. And does it make me feel less Latina? No, um, especially when we have a role model like Selena. If you've seen the movie, I think every... Um, Latin American person, like when I say Latin American, I'm referring to Latinas that live in America that may feel stuck or not feel Latina enough because um, they were born in the U.S. and maybe they don't speak Spanish fluently. Selena grew up in the U.S. and there is this line in the movie where she says, or her dad says, you're never going to be American enough for the Americans. You're never going to be Mexican, Mexican enough for the Mexicans. And I think that line in the movie resonated with so many Latinas living in America because it's true, when I grew up, the reason I lost so much of my Spanish is because my parents didn't want me to get made fun of, they wanted me to be successful, and back then, I think they, they thought that speaking English fluently would get me far in life, not speaking Spanish or having an accent when speaking English. And I think now there's been this switch where everyone, um, now wants to be bilingual and everybody wants to be fluent in multiple languages and I feel like everyone is more proud than ever of their roots and I think that is amazing. So you shouldn't feel any less Latina if you are not fluent. I don't feel any less Latina. I am proud of my origins. I am proud of being Mexican and um, I just need to improve all my Spanish a little more so that I can do a video in Spanish for you guys soon. How do you deal with sugar cravings? What do you reach for? When I have sugar cravings, I will eat sugar, but I try and eat a healthier version of sugar. So um, usually it'll be something like fruit, um, especially fruit that is on the low glycemic in index, like um, berries, raspberries, blackberries, blueberries. But if I'm like really, really craving sugar, I usually, <laughs> I usually reach for like ice cream, um, especially like Halo Top. Yeah, I would say that's what I would get out of bed for and go to the grocery store and pick up if I was craving sugar. Do you find the community to be supportive of fellow creators? Um, there's obviously people in the industry that choose to go their own route and not be as supportive, but I would say for the most part, everyone is incredibly supportive, especially all the girls that were on that Bora Bora trip with NARS. Um, Roxette, Yes, Cezanne, um, Ayla Sarai, Karen, um, Angel Mac Daddy, uh, Jackie, I feel like all of us are so supportive of one another and there's no sense of competition with them. But yeah, I would say a majority, I, there's just so much work to go around and we only improve if we grow together versus knocking each other down and being competitive. And yeah, I think for the most part, everyone that I surround myself with is very supportive because um, if you're not in your caddy, then I just don't associate myself with you. What's one makeup and skincare item you keep buying over and over again? This is like a no-brainer for me. Skincare, green clean, or pharmacy green clean um, makeup remover. I <laughs> keep buying over and over and over again. Um, I think I had like three or four empty bottles in my empties video. Also, Lala Retro Whipped Cream. And then in terms of makeup, it's really hard because I feel like I never actually run out of makeup because um, I'm so lucky to receive so much PR. But if I go out and buy um, makeup, I would say MAC. Fix Plus is what I constantly replenish as well. <laughs> this one's kind of funny. Favorite house plant? Do you want more house plant babies? I love plants. If it was up to me, it would look like a jungle in here, especially the bedroom. My favorite plant is, I don't know the real name of it, but um, in Mexico, they call it the money plant. Not the money tree, not the one that like intertwines. It's um, that one plant that like every Mexican owns in their household. Should I go get it? Let me go get it real quick. <laughs> This plant right here is my absolute favorite. If you're Mexican and you're watching this, you're like, yes, I know this plant so well, but look at her. She is thriving uh, and I don't want her to die because I, I take such good care of her because someone told me that um, it's like an abuelita superstition that um, as long as this plant is alive and thriving, money will be coming into your life. So I take very, very good care of her. So she's definitely my favorite mainly because she's just so beautiful and green. Green's my favorite color, so I love her so much. Keep, keep growing, friend. <gasps> is that a duck? Is there a... <gasps> no! 
the biggest highlight of your YouTube career? It's funny that I'm getting asked this question now because I think the biggest highlight was visiting Mochitane with um, NARS because of the fact that I used to work at the boutique and stare at a photo of that island in a book during all of my shifts at NARS. So to visit the island in person was beyond my wildest dreams. I think it was just so crazy that that even happened. Um, and that wouldn't have happened without you two, without you guys. So I would say that is my biggest highlight to date, but I can name so many, just um, seeing my subscriber count go up, the first time I hit 100K, that was incredible. Um, the first time one of my videos hit a million views, um, it goes on and on, but I think visiting Motutane was just, unbelievable so unbelievable i'm still in shock that that even happened it's so crazy the world works in mysterious ways that's all i have to say any tips for how to stay motivated for doing sports going to the gym and eating healthy when someone is just getting into a healthy routine or or just starting out at the gym the one thing i tell them is to just stick with it it's going to be incredibly hard in the very beginning because it's new to you but the moment you start seeing results is the moment you won't want to give up uh, and this happens to all my friends. I see them start going to the gym and they're like, I hate it, I hate going to the gym. And then they start seeing like some cuts in their arms, some muscle definition, and all of a sudden they're like, I wanna keep going, I love working out, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. So stick with it is all I have to say. And if it means going to the gym at 4 a.m. every single day so that you will go, then go at 4 a.m. Treat it like an important meeting that you must attend every single day. This one's kind of cute. What are some things I will need moving out on my own? Trying to make a list, but I'm I'm sure there is something. I think it cut her off. Um, when I first moved out on my own, I moved into the sorority house. That was my first move um, out on my own. And everything's kind of given to you in the house with your dues that you pay. Your outrageous sorority dues but being in a sorority was very worth it. Um, but when I first moved out to LA on my own, I actually, um, <laughs> I was couch surfing. Why am I like caressing my boob right now? I'm like caressing my hair and my boob at the same time. When I first moved out to LA, um, I was actually couch surfing for the longest time. So I was living out of a suitcase. When I finally got an apartment, I was sleeping on an inflatable mattress for like three months and my drawers were those plastic drawers that you get from Walmart. So I don't know if I can give you the best advice. I guess just make sure you have the essentials, something to sleep on and something to hold your, your personal items. Um, because moving out on your own is extremely expensive because you're gonna wanna decorate your place. You're gonna wanna, you know, get all the little things that you need in order to live on your own. Um, and you're gonna find that you need a lot. So just start with the essentials and then slowly start decorating and stuff like that. Best lipstick for the holidays, the NARS Velvet, or sorry, the NARS Power Matte Lip Pigment and also the YSL, the Slim Lipsticks are definitely my must-haves right now. And I would highly recommend them to anyone. Are you planning a Mexican vacation to connect more with your roots? So growing up, I actually visited almost every touristy destination in Mexico because my parents loved vacationing in Mexico. So I've been to Hualtulco. Oh no, I didn't go to Hualtulco. We, oh, that reminds me, we were gonna go to Hualtulco. We missed the flight, but it was a sign because a massive hurricane hit Hualtulco when we were um, heading there for vacation one year. So no, I never went to Hualtulco, but I've been to um, Alcapulco, Puerto, Puerto Vallarta. I've been to Chihuahua, where my mom's side of the family's from. Haven't been in a while though, um, but I still have family there. I really wanna go to Guadalajara because anytime I tell people um, my roots and I say that my dad's side of the family is from Guadalajara, even though he grew up in Tijuana, they immediately are like, you have to go visit. Um, your looks totally make sense now because um, it's very common out there for, uh, or to see Mexicans with light skin and light eyes. So I definitely want to visit and see that for myself to see where my um, roots came from. So yeah, I do have um, future plans, um, but I have visited quite, quite a bit in the past. What's on your Christmas list? Nothing. I ask for nothing for my birthday, for Christmas, because with all the PR that gets sent, I have more than enough in my life. I have more than I could ever need to the point where I'm constantly donating and giving it away. Friday giveaways are coming, if you guys remember from last year. So yeah, I don't really ask for anything because I have too much stuff and I don't need any more. And I'd rather just, um, you know, let the people in my life save their money on me. <laughs> what would you be doing if you weren't doing makeup? Probably either nutrition or something having to do with nutrition or a personal trainer because 
I love health and fitness so, so much. Um, it's a part of my daily life that I would love to make it a profession um, to help others with it. So definitely personal trainer or nutritionist. What's your favorite fragrance? Le Labo Santal 33, also Poivre, I believe it's pronounced Poivre, which is the um, special city scent for London. Best anti-wrinkle serum slash Botox in a bottle. Botox. <laughs> I get asked this, I've been asked this before. I have gotten Botox on my forehead. Do not, do not go out and get Botox because you see other people doing it. Only get it if like your dermatologist has recommended it to you. If you're above a certain age, um, I've gotten like a, I've gotten 16 year old or just teenagers asking me if they need Botox. And I'm like, what on earth? Like what has our industry been teaching you? So I try not to promote it because I think um, some people then start getting the wrong impression and um, they don't know much about Botox, but I actually had a dermatologist um, or the one dermatologist I ever met with that really, really helped clear up my skin when I was having skin issues maybe like two years ago. They told me um, a lot of skincare is junk. It's all marketing. The only things that work are Retin-A and Botox for anti-aging purposes. Um, so after he told me that, I decided to try Botox on my forehead and it was life-changing. Kyle's very much against it. He's probably gonna be mad that I'm even talking about it in this video, but I'm very open with you guys. Um, and if you ask, I will tell. So um, yeah, I don't know in terms of like serums what works. I mean, I would say, um, try and see a dermatologist to get a Retin-A prescription and if you're like approaching 30, maybe look into Botox if you have a lot of forehead wrinkles or crow's feet. Um, a lot of my friends do it as well that aren't in the industry and it really does work. Fave restaurant in LA, Salazar. Salazar Frogtown, definitely my favorite. It's a little fancier than like your typical Mexican food but still really, really good. Usually if people do fancy Mexican, I judge it really hard, but they do it very, very well. You've gone to your dream destination with NARS. What's your next dream travel location? I really, I, I have so many places I wanna visit on my list and I just wanna say one thing, um, not even having to really do with this question, or kind of, prior to maybe a year or two ago, I hadn't traveled for like, six to 10 years. I think the last place I had traveled to was like in college to Cabo for spring break. And then after that, so that was like two th between 2008 and 2011. And then after that, I was incredibly broke and just hustling my ass off for years. And I didn't have money to splurge on vacations. So I'm incredibly thankful that my job allows me to travel. Just in the past six months to a year, I've gotten almost 200,000 miles with Delta. Gold member, oh, what's it called? What do they call it on Delta? Gold medallion member here. So I am beyond thankful that my career allows me to travel to so many amazing destinations because prior to that, your homegirl had gone nowhere. <laughs> this is another funny one because I'm pretty sure you're referring to Karen I Love Sarai. It says, what's it like working in the makeup industry with your hermana? Karen and I joke all the time that we're sisters, but we're not actually sisters. We just share a lot in common and I absolutely love that girl. And um, yeah, we're not actually sisters, but I do love working with her, it's really fun. Anytime she's on a trip uh, or anytime we're on the same trip together, um, same event, I get really excited. Tips for confidence. I'm short and feel like people overlook me, don't take me seriously at work. Confidence really comes down to you. I mean, you have control of your confidence I think that I'm I'm really short, but maybe because I I love fitness so much and I know that I can work on my body through fitness that even though I'm five feet tall, I love that I have muscle and that I can carry my own suitcases. I can lift my own carry-on over my head into the overhead compartments on a plane. I can carry my own groceries. That gives me confidence knowing that I don't need a man, even though I have a man, I don't need a man I don't need his assistance. I can do it all on my own. So that's given me confidence. So it's really your own mentality. I think you really need to um, hone in on um, your thoughts and always look at the positive. Like what is it that you love about yourself and really radiate that versus focusing on I'm so sure, I'm so sure. Cause I could do that. Like I could dwell on the fact that I'm five feet tall all the time, but I don't. Instead I focus on my strength, that I'm strong and that, um, I can power lift lots of weight. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Are you more excited about Thanksgiving or Christmas Eve day? So I've never really talked about this with you guys, but the holidays 
aren't my favorite. I love the holidays in general. I love everything that surrounds the holidays. But when it comes to the actual day, um, they've been very difficult for me for the past couple years because my parents actually split up not too long ago. Probably when I was around 22 years old, I'm currently 29. And ever since then, um, I think it's been very difficult for our family to figure out the holidays, what to do, where to spend it, how to spend it. It's it's always a very stressful time. Obviously, um, trying to also spend it with Kyle's family, but his family lives in Washington and it gets really pricey to go up there. And um, there was a time where, I, I mean, I come from a traditional Mexican family and they were very like, no, you spend the holidays with your family, not with your boyfriend's family. So that was always a struggle. So the holidays have always been very difficult for me. Well, not always, in the past couple of years, they've been very difficult. So I don't actually really look forward to the holiday itself, but I do look forward to everything around it. How do you always maintain being positive? Honestly, I do have my negative moments and I just don't share that on um, my socials with you guys because I like to radiate positivity, especially to my followers. And um, I don't really see a purpose in being negative on social media because it brings everyone else down. Um, so I, I try to always look at everything as glass half full. I try to keep it positive. If I find myself going down a negative path, there was this amazing documentary on Netflix called The Minimalist or Minimalism. I'll link it down below, along with everything else. And there's this line in the movie that said, or in the documentary that says, um, or he's talking to a monk or someone who's like a professional in meditation. And he asks them, how do you stay positive? Or, um, you know, like, how are you able to control your thoughts? And he said, when you start getting carried away with negative thoughts, for example, if you're like, I'm running late, I'm gonna miss my flight which is going to lead to me missing this work opportunity, which is going to lead to no money, which then is going to lead to me losing my house. You know, when thoughts spiral out of control like that, he said, ask yourself, is this useful? Are these thoughts useful? And if they are not, you need to stop right there and handle or just um, handle what is currently happening in your life and not think or spiral out of control with negative thoughts. So um, I would say... If, you're, if you struggle with being positive or if you're wondering how I stay so positive, is I try to really reel in my thoughts when they start to get very, very negative. I'm getting a lot of questions about my journey as a makeup artist and I do have an entire video going over that coming soon. So just be patient and stay tuned. I can't wait for that video. I can't wait for you guys to see it. What inspired you to start being active and healthy? Um, when I was in college, my first year, my first semester, I actually gained a lot of weight and I think it had to do with drinking. Um, you drink so much when you're in college, well at least I did, can't speak for everyone, but all that drinking and partying caught up with me and I remember taking photos um, before going out with my sorority and we used to make like the tiniest outfits out of like one yard of material, it was seriously like so scandalous. And I remember looking at that photo afterwards and being like, what? what happened? Like your midsection looks so, um, or like a little thicker than normal. Um, I don't know how much weight I gained exactly, but I did gain a lot of weight that first year in college. Um, not like, not so dramatic that I looked overweight, but enough for me to feel uncomfortable in certain clothes. And so I started working out. I started off by just doing a ton of cardio at the gym because the gym used to make me really nervous. I felt very insecure and not confident, so I would just always be on the treadmill, always be on the treadmill. And then it slowly evolved as I learned more how to do weights and different exercises, circuits. Um, I took a lot of fitness classes. And yeah, that's what led to where I am today. So it's been almost like a decade of me getting into fitness or my fitness journey. Um, but that photo definitely inspired me to get my butt into shape because I was like, whoa, what happened there? <laughs> what is your favorite movie of all time and why? It used to be Nemo, and I think Nemo is still like my go-to feel-good favorite movie, but this movie recently came out and it quickly became a favorite of mine, and I watch it every single time it's available on an airplane to watch, and that is La La Land. The reason I love that movie so much is because it really shows the struggle of going from nothing to something, 
especially when moving to LA. So I really related to that movie because it shows um, a character's development from nothing to something in the city of LA and every time I watch it, it makes me happy because it allows me to reflect on how far I've come in my career and it brings back those memories of when I first moved here and how, how scared I was to first move here, even though I'm from San Diego, so it was only like a two hour drive. But still, I just, the idea of failing is so real when you have nothing and I didn't want to fail and have to move back home. So that is why I love that movie so much and that is why I watch it whenever it's available because it brings back both good and bad memories. Mostly good. It just, it's like a feel-good movie because when I watch it, I'm like, ah, I remember how hard it was and I'm so thankful and happy for um, where I am today. So yeah, that's my current favorite movie. And I think it will be my favorite movie for a long time. It's just a feel-good movie. If you haven't seen it, definitely watch it. Miss your vlogs. Will you ever do weekly vlogs in the future? The reason I stopped doing vlogs or weekly vlogs is because <laughs> with Insta stories and vlogging, I felt like I was never living in the moment and that kills me as much as my career is um, being online. There is a, I feel like there is a borderline, there is a limit and when you choose to weekly vlog or daily vlog, you're recording everything all the time and I, I guess there's a way to do it where you don't have to record all the time but I felt the need to record all the time and it was very debilitating in that I, I felt like I was never really experiencing anything firsthand or I was never present because I was living everything through a screen. So I might, I vlog here and there when there's like something special happening, but not weekly vlogs because I wanna live in the moment as much as I can. When are you supposed to get your eye surgery? That's so sweet that you ask and that you remember about um, that I'm gonna get eye surgery. I'm probably gonna get it in January on um, this eye that keeps twitching throughout this entire video. I feel it, um, hopefully it's not showing on camera. Um, I have severe sun damage in this eye and I have what is called a penguicula that is slowly but surely progressing over my eye and I'm gonna get it removed. So it's not like anything like extreme, it's, you know, I don't want you guys to like freak out for me. Um, it should be a fairly simple surgery, but I will most likely get it in January and I will be out for a month because I'll have an eye patch and <laughs> you can't, they told me you can't even put water on your face for an entire month, so no makeup, no water. Probably no working out because you can't sweat, so yeah, it'll probably happen in January. Do you do cardio every day? No. I skip rope to warm up for like five to 10 minutes, but I'm really bad at cardio. What is the most important thing you have to put inside your luggage when you travel? Chonies, underwear. If I forget underwear, I am doomed. <laughs> I'm the kind of person that packs like double or triple the amount of underwear for the amount of days that you're gonna be on vacation or away from home. <laughs> Anybody else do that? What color are your eyes exactly? So I actually learned in high school and my mom gets so mad because my driver's license says hazel. Um, but I learned in high school that there is only like, I think um, brown, is it brown, blue? Brown, blue, and hazel are like the dominant eye colors. And then there's green hazel, blue hazel, brown hazel. So I labeled my eyes as green hazel because they're not just green. They have like yellow in the middle, black, gray, blue. Um, they have a variation of colors. So I labeled my eyes as green hazel but that wasn't an option for your license, so mine just says hazel, and my parents are like, your eyes are green, why would you put that? But to keep it simple, my eyes are green. If you wanna make it complicated, green hazel. <laughs> Cause they have like the yellow, anyway, moving on. If you could have dinner with anyone, dead or alive, who would it be? I would choose Lady Gaga because, first of all, I, I die for her. I love Lady Gaga, not just for um, her artistry as a musician, as an actress. I think she is such a well-rounded person. She is such a good human being and I think she has such great, I feel like she has such a great mentality towards human rights and um, she just she's such a good advocate for being a good person and I think that if I sat down and had dinner with her, we would have an incredible conversation. I feel like our conversation would go so much m deeper than just talking about music and her talents. It would be talking about um, just things that are inspirational, 
about being kind, about being a good human. Um, I don't know, I find her very, very inspirational. Why hasn't Kyle been on your channel yet? It seems that he's not interested in what you do. Okay, Kyle is like one of the reasons I even started my YouTube channel. He really, really pushed me to start my channel uh, when I hit rock bottom financially. He was like, it's now or never, you have to start. So uh, he did buy me my first lighting kit. It was like a little lighting kit from Amazon with the little umbrellas. It was tungsten lighting. It was you know, not good, but it worked. So it's not that he's not into it. He is a very uh, private person behind, um, he likes to be behind the camera, not in front of it. He's a screenwriter. So he works in the entertainment industry. So I think he feels really weird being on camera and being like this personality. He likes to, it's like all writers, right? I feel like all writers are very like emotional, deep, in their thoughts kind of people. Um, so he doesn't like to be on camera because he feels really awkward. He he it feels very forced for him and that's why i don't show him as much on stories anymore because i don't want him to feel uncomfortable or feel pressured to be on camera um and i always really really dislike people being like he's annoyed or he doesn't want to be on camera i got really annoyed with that and like usually it's him just joking around and i just didn't want to put that pressure on him so that's why you don't see him on my channel or on stories as much because he feels really uncomfortable so but he's incredibly supportive like i said if it were for him I don't think I would have ever really started my YouTube channel because I needed that extra push and he gave me that little extra push that I needed. And that concludes this q and I've been sitting here for two hours now, so this video is gonna be really fun to edit. I'll try and just keep the really juicy questions or answers in this video. Um, hopefully you guys got like a good snack in. Maybe you got to have breakfast while watching this video. Hopefully you got to know me a little bit better. Um, let me know if you want me to do more Q&A's. I love doing these videos for you guys. And um, if you aren't following me on Instagram, give me a follow there because I interact more um, in real time there. I answer questions all the time. Um, so follow me on Instagram. And um, as usual, if you guys enjoyed this video, give it a like, share it, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I will see you in my next video. Bye, guys.